All right, well, thank you very much for having me. My name is Max Fomachev Zamilov. I'm the president of Quantum Potential Corporation. I'm also an associate professor of computer science and engineering at Pennsylvania State University. So the reason I'm here is because I want to talk about gravitation-induced fusion. Basically, our team have discovered a means for cheap and efficient way of creating micro-thermonuclear fusion within the collapsing bubbles, more specifically, without, within the pores of the collapsing bubbles in liquids. So our discovery, in principle, allows building inexpensive power generators that will run on deuterium and initially will produce low-grade heat, and with some luck, maybe we can scale it up to produce uh, electric power. Well, by no means uh, this is a novel idea, so we do not take pride in uh, inventing it. We stand on the shoulders of giants, and you all are familiar with the phenomenon of cavitation, and I bet most of you know about the work of Ruzi Taliarkan in uh, the uh, ensuing bubble gate scandal. It seems that uh, any time a new brilliant idea comes along, there has to be a scandal that's going to ruin it and damage the field. So part of the motivation behind the company was to clear the field out of uh, stigma of pseudoscience and reestablish it as a legitimate area of research. So in uh, starting the company, I spent about eight years doing my own due diligence, uh, much in the same uh, route as uh, lessons. Uh, looking at the experiments and uh, mostly scratching off, off my list. And then I came across bubble fusion and uh, I read all the papers and realized, well, there are three other teams that nobody knows about, and those were teams in Russia. Most of Russian literature is not translated, so their research is obscure. But, for example, a team at High Temperature Institute in Moscow was able to do their own bubble fusion experiment, totally different, with another team in the Urals, and yet another author, Andrew Lipson, whom some of you know, too, who unfortunately passed away. So everything kind of pointed out uh, into the direction that this is a viable you know, field of research. And I decided to put my uh, money where my mouth was. So I closed down my retirement account. I told my son that he's going to pay for his own college. <laughs> <laughs> and I launched a company. One of potential corporation was formed in 2011. Um, now we're up to seven employees, five full-time, two part-time. The truth is I started with my own cash, then you know, five other investors pitched in, and then by virtue of uh, necessity to keep company afloat, we started doing you know, commercial projects that keep company running, but unfortunately distract us from what we like to do best, is to think around with nuclear science. So we tell our you know, people who you know, hear our story and they say, yeah, you know, that sounds like a good, good deal. You know, how do we know you're successful? I say, well, you can judge our success by the size of the crater we made. If it's small, it's not, it's not that great. Anyway, we're based at uh, Penn State Innovation Park. You know, we have state-of-the-art research facility, a lab office, machine shop. All in all, we've uh, burned through $600,000, uh, which is uh, investment money, founders' money, you know, projects, whatever we are able to get our hands on. <coughs> now, what have we accomplished in the past two years besides uh, ruining our professional reputation? But fortunately, my field at the university is different from physics, so nobody gives a damn about what I do in my spare time. <laughs> anyway, we have an analytical model that's both Mathematica and MATLAB that allows us to model bubble collapse you know, with the highest precision we can possibly make it you know, at the current state-of-the-art uh, knowledge. Now, we have also obtained a uh, molecular dynamic code from UCLA that was developed in Seth Putterman's lab. And as you know, Seth Putterman is the authority in, you know, you can think of Telly Arkin as the father of bubble fusion, but the thinking of Putterman really is. So we got his code, you know, we revised it, and we adapted it to our own uh, needs, and we're able to model bubble collapse and predict how many fusion events we're able to get. So the trick is to find, you know, the optimal combination. What is the bubble size? What is the bubble gas composition? What is the driving pressure? You know, what is the liquid? You know, all that jazz, and that's what we use that software for. It was able to cut our development time dramatically. Now, after we've modeled everything, or rather in parallel with modeling, we've been pursuing several experiments, and our base, and most important one probably, is the proof of concept that you'll see on the next picture, which we run a few times, and I'd like to believe detected neutrons on three occasions, and we also have a commercial generator prototype. But let's start with the proof of concept experiment. Uh, what you're looking is in a modified version of Smorodov's experiment, and Smorodov is a Russian inventor, and his research is unfortunately not known in the US. 
But his point was, well, let's take a chamber, let's fill it with glycerin, let's create a huge deuterium bubble in it, and let's subject it to about 1,000 bars of pressure, and let's hope you know, we get neutrons. So this is what he did, and this is what he got. So we've created an improved version of his setup that has a gas mixing uh, system there, and additional innovations that pertain you know, to our know-how and IP, if you can have it in this field. At any rate, uh, we ran this experiment about 40 times, and we got what looked like neutron signal three times, but we failed to achieve uh, our most important task. The most important task in our business plan is to get a repeatable on-demand fusion every time you push the button. I think uh, I would agree it's maybe you know, too early to commercialize uh, alternative energy research, it, even though our research does not fall in cold fusion category, it's very much hot fusion, but it's still you know, a controversial area. So the first step is to show that you know concept works without any doubt. And uh, what what I'd like to see in this field, and uh, what we gear our research towards, is to create such an easy and repeatable on-demand experiment that anybody can reproduce. You know, Taliarkin's work was uh, seminal, but unfortunately his papers lacked details. Therefore, you know, when several teams tried to reproduce his results, they failed. But they failed not because you know Teleyarkin's research was flawed. They failed because Teleyarkin was too greedy, and we failed some of the important you know information from the papers. So we're trying to fix this. So our objective is you know to open the public, provide access to anyone and everyone who is interested, and be able you know to have fusion, to have neutrons every time you push a button. So we've already secured collaboration you know, from Acom, which is one of the U.S. largest engineering firms, and as soon as, as we are ready. The engineers will come and visit and will look at our measurements and say, yep, that's good. And you know, Penn State is quasi interested in the sense that they openly will never admit you know, the interest, but privately I've talked to the faculty and they say, hey, Max, when we have neutrons, you know, we'll be the first to measure and just tell, tell us when, when you're ready. So I feel it's very, very important you know, to be open about you know, what you know, what you don't know, and let others reproduce your work. Because what we really need is an event that's going to trigger acceptance of this field of science as science and not pseudoscience. And this is, you know, yeah. frankly, you know, the biggest accomplishment we, you know, we hope you know, to come through. So what you're looking at is here is a commercial version of our bubble generator. So the previous picture was uh, a single bubble experiment just to show a neutron. It has no other you know, practical utility to just demonstrate the concept. This is what we believe that uh, the commercial generator could look like. It is a modified centrifugal pump, and it was modified not to pump, but rather to create pressure variations with it. So it's a sire. So our simulations show that you know, we should uh, infuse this machine with a micron-sized bubbles and subject them to huge pressure variations on the order of you know, maybe a few hundred bars, a few tenths to a few hundred bars. And uh, the feasibility studies show that if all pans out, then one liter of liquid will be able to generate you know, 10 kilowatts of thermal energy. So with any luck, in a few years down the road, the generator will be able to produce 100 kilowatt of, grade, of low grade heat. So currently we have this machine up and running and we're mostly refining its acoustics. You know, we're mostly refining hardware and we're about one month away from uh, doing our first multi-bubble fusion test on this machine as soon as we complete our current simulation which is running on uh, 64 processors around the clock, courtesy of advanced micro devices, but the you know, results are coming very, very soon. Now, uh, we were not the first one to ascertain the feasibility of cavitation induced fusion. In fact, this research initiated in a, a naval research laboratory, and the Linus reactor is a, a distant you know, cousin to this research. So Navy showed that you know, bubble fusion in principle is feasible. We did our own calculation that's published in our paper, and 10 kilowatt from one liter. It's great if you can achieve it, it scales you know, with volume, and the more volume you give it, the more heat you're going to get. What is also beautiful, you all know the law of diminishing returns, right? So the more you work, the less you get. Unfortunately, you know, with uh, gravitation diffusion, it's the opposite. It's engineer's dream because of quantum, uh, quantum mechanical reasons. 10 times boost in temperature, you get your reaction boost by 50,000 times. So small improvements into the design will result in huge improvements in the output. What is also fortunate, you know, if you overdo it, the crater is not going to form because you know bubbles. If you get, if they get too hot, uh, they fill up with vapor, and vapor quenches the reaction. So there is not a possibility of runaway reaction. So there is a sweet spot that we can heat, and the choice of liquid is extremely important. 
well, you know, we think we might do a little bit better than our competition, uh, and here are the reasons why. Uh, most of the research is focused on DT fusion. Well, we plan to do a DT fusion, and as you know, the cross section for the deuterium freedom fusion is much larger, so the chances of success is 1,000 times higher. So think about it a thousand times. So this is the one most important you know, optimization we've got to introduce. We've got to use tritium in our results. So we're working actively to get just the enough quantity. Now, because we've uh, combined uh, heavy gas and light gas to fill our bubbles, so bubble quantity is, is engineered, we don't need a strong of a pressure. So we don't need thousands of bars. Maybe it'll be enough, you know, a few tens, maybe 100 bars to achieve the same uh, degree of fusion by virtue of shockwave convergence in the bubble core. Now, we don't use cavitation per se. Cavitation means creating bubbles in the liquid. So instead, we inject engineered bubbles in the liquid. That removes a whole slew of related you know, technical difficulties. And our hardware does not rely on acoustic cavitation, which is a low efficiency, maybe an ultrasonic point is 10%. Instead, we do hydrodynamic cavitation. And right now, our machine, our mechanical siren, is about 60% efficient. So our immediate goal, you already know, create an on-demand repeatable fusion every time you push a button, you know, make sure everybody who does not believe us, you know, come in and by all means scrutinize and criticize our research. You know, one thing that this field needs is open exchange of ideas, open criticism, so we hope to stay that way. Now, we do want to raise some money to complete our research. What we've learned, it's very difficult to be focused on a scientific agenda when you have to do a lot of work, you know, just to keep the company afloat. Therefore, if you have spare cash, we could accept you know, $162,000 cash, check, and money order, or I can pass a hat at the end. It's your choice. <laughs> so at this point, I would like to end my conversation. And you know, thank you for your attention. And please vote for us for People's Choice Award. <laughs>